Paper Planes by a Street Sweeper Social Club. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to the largest private sector labor election in nearly 70 years. The stakes are enormous, and it could have sweeping ramifications for the future of health care unions. The battle is over which union will win the right to represent the interests of some 43,000 employees in the largest hospital chain in California, Kaiser Permanente. Workers will choose between the giant service employees International Union, or SEIU, and the much smaller breakaway National Union of Health Workers, or NUHW. The election is happening as a result of a decision by the National Labor Relations Board, which was petitioned a year and a half ago by health care workers who wanted to be represented by NUHW. In January of 2009, dissident leaders left the SEIU's United Healthcare Workers West and formed a National Union of Healthcare Workers. They now have about 6,000 members, and after 18 months of legal delays and workplace skirmishes, the stage is set for a decisive showdown between the two unions. Voting is by mail in ballot and begins this week. The vote count begins in early October. For more, I'm joined here in New York by Mark Brenner, the director of Labor Notes. Welcome to Democracy Now! Great to be here, Juan. Tell us, in, uh, in summary, what the, what the stakes are here between this very small breakaway group uh, led by Sal Roselli and the giant 800-pound gorilla of the labor movement, SEIU. Well, I mean, I think that really, for for uh, for me, what this really represents is is two things. Number one, who's actually going to be in charge of the unions that 16 million people are are, are members of still in our country? Um, is it going to be folks who are in D.C., folks who've never actually worked a day in their life uh, in the bargaining units that they're representing? Uh, and, and second, um, who's going to be in charge of our relationship with our with our boss? I mean, you know, the labor movement was founded, you know, by people who basically said, "I want to, you know, we want to get together." We want to actually control, have some modicum of say over our relationship with our employer. And, you know, that's essentially been taken away little by little from uh, a lot of workers around the country and concentrated, in, especially in SEIU's case, in a small number of people's hands who, you know, are, are far removed from the daily struggles of, of workers in the job. And so this is really about putting those two things back in the hands of the members. Uh, which to me couldn't be any more important for the future of our labor movement or for actually figuring out a way to grow again, um, because I think members are sort of the missing ingredient in, in how we're going to rebuild this labor movement of ours. Well, uh, obviously, uh, the SEIU leadership uh, believes that this uh, movement to try to challenge their representation is actually uh, weakening the labor movement, is creating divisions uh, uh, within it that are unnecessary at a time when labor is under such continued assault by uh, by uh, corporations and and their supporters throughout the throughout the country. Your response to that concern? Well, I mean, fortunately, they don't get to make the decision about who represents the workers. The workers get to make that decision themselves. Now, of course, they're going to spend millions of dollars to influence that decision. But I find it kind of ironic because, you know, earlier this year when the Democrats were, um, you know, whining and moaning about $10 million that the labor movement threw down the toilet, uh, putting a primary challenger to Blanche Lincoln in Arkansas, everyone defended our right to, you know, call our own shots, to be independent, to back who we wanted to back. Uh, you know, and it wasn't the Democrats' decision. You know, White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel was famously, you know, b deriding uh, this, this choice. And I feel like, well, it's the same situation here. You know, ultimately, the folks that work in those hospitals are the ones who get to decide who gets to represent them. Uh, I also think it's really important to back up and remember how we got here, Juan. This is not a situation of personalities or egos. I mean, this is a situation where systematically thousands and thousands of members in California who are part of this union, you know, SEIU, United Healthcare Workers West, said, this is how we want our union to, to, to be run. This is what we want uh, in terms of our relationship with our employer. And SEIU, folks in D.C., many who had never actually worked a day in their life as a, as a, as a health care worker, said, no, you don't get to make that choice. Uh, you know, the, the, the people who formed the breakaway were not like, they didn't choose to do this. They were driven out of their own union, the union that they spent, uh, you know, decades building by uh, folks in D.C. And so now they've done really all they've got left to do, which is to try to uh, rebuild what they had going in California. And I think actually they'll be better for it because, you know, the struggle has really actually created a different spirit. It's really forced a new generation of health care workers to stand up for some 
something and actually, you know, make some hard choices about how far they're willing to go for their union. Now, the employer in this case, Kaiser Permanente, has uh, publicly said that it is staying out of the fray, that this is a decision that the workers, their workers, have to make on their own. But yet some people have been saying that, at least in some of the previous organizing drives that NUHW won, Kaiser Permanente immediately penalized uh, the uh, the workers who chose not to stay with SEIU. Could you talk about that? I mean, this is one of the saddest things about uh, this whole uh, situation in California. California is that SEIU has been so uh, desperate to hold on to these workers, they like their baseball trading cards or something that they're fighting to, to kind of keep in a box, uh, that they've been willing to actually c c collaborate with employers to get NUHW supporters fired, to get people disciplined, to get them transferred, to basically make their lives a living hell for the choice that is their right to make. Uh, so. It, it, Kaiser's been no different. I mean, we've seen amazing amount of collaboration. I mean, I've talked to people every day who, uh, you know, have supervisors following them around. You know, they show up after, you know, doing something for their job and their boss knows exactly where they are. Well, why do they know that? They know that because people who actually, they pay their salary, staffers for SEIU, are telling bosses all over the hospital system, you know, where the quote-unquote troublemakers are going. We've had people fired. We've had people disciplined. I mean, it's just amazing uh, and, and actually just quite disgusting to see a union willing to go to so many lengths to collude with the employers to get really good trade union activists fired simply because they don't agree with the program that's being handed down from Washington. I, I, I think that's got to stop, and I think every trade unionist around the country actually should be standing up and saying, that's a line that we're not willing to cross. Well, at the same time, though, there are questions about the tactics that have have been used uh, by NUHW to get to this point, Sal Roselli. There was a, a trial uh, in California where a jury uh, uh ordered Roselli to pay back about $1.5 million in, in SEIU funds that apparently he uh, illegally diverted before he and his group split away from SEIU. Uh, so there are questions as to some of the tactics of Roselli, no? I, I think this is sort of the big lie that SEIU has been propagating in this case, uh, and I wish we could just have an honest conversation about it. Basically, uh, this is not a situation of corruption, although there's plenty of corruption to be found inside SEIU. They're, they're, they're facing a lot of scrutiny these days for how their uh, uh, officers and top leaders have been using member dues. This is a situation where uh, a civil court said,